And we're back, and Haley and I are in the studio with Andy Yates from Andy Yates Design. Andy, thanks for being here. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Haley. It's great to be back. Yeah, yeah we're excited to, to talk about bathrooms, and I'm going to keep it adult. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> it's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I have five kids, and so even though potty humor has never been my thing, eh. Kind of becomes it after a while. Just well, it's because how you get your laughs. It's right. You know, <laughs> easy laughs, easy laughs. No, we want to dig into bathroom remodels, bathroom renovations. It's something that it's a major room. It can be expensive. It can be really expensive and depressing to get it wrong. It can be daunting. Too. Yeah, there's now, a lot of finishes. Exactly. Now, Andy, you were just featured recently in an article on Redfin. Talk about that just a minute, just to kind of let our listeners know. About that article, what you had to do with that? Sure. Um, so part of Redfin's real estate empire is their very popular blog that relates mm-hmm. to home matters, design, construction. And it is very common for new homeowners to want to get in and gut bathrooms and kitchens right sure. away. Yeah. Because as you said, they are such personal spaces. And we use them consistently every day throughout the day, especially now that many people do work from home in a permanent or hybrid situation. And we want them to feel like ours. Yeah. And and it's there's almost something that I know I've had clients think feels a little unsettling about using other people's toilets and bathtubs <laughs> and sinks, <laughs> even though they're perfectly hygienic. Right. So um, yeah, my friends at Red Finn reached out and just asked if I could talk a little bit about bathroom design. Haley saw that on my social media and decided it might be a great topic for us to broach since we haven't specifically discussed bathroom design. Right. Now, Andy's got 15 points to go over. 15. Yes. Now, this, you know, for listeners, yeah, they're not aware, but this is par for the course. This is how Andy does it. (laughs) Very thorough. And Andy, I think, yeah, I love it. And I think we got like the first seven. Can, are, we're kind of kind of lumped together. There, there's a lot of stuff here, and this is for people really with almost any project that they're undertaking, right? Yeah, essentially, um, part of planning a design uh, in a bathroom, uh, a renovation, or a new build um, that it's applicable to all projects. And we talk about this in terms of you know time, cost, and quality. Sure. You're going to start any project right by sort of doing your own personal research. You're going to really dig into what aesthetics you love, um, what are the kind of um, bells and whistles and kind of amenities that you think you might mm-hmm. need. Starting to kind of throw everything together in a Pinterest board, inspiration folder. Sure. But you're really going to kind of develop the look and aesthetic that you like as much as you're able. I've had clients who've never done this and just sort of said, you're the expert. You tell me what I like. Okay. <laughs> I'll look at it and say that. But most yeah. people do have some starting point. Sure. So then it's really about what can you budget properly for this? Mm-hmm. You know, really hold yourself accountable to that ceiling and then kind of work backwards from that. What can you afford? Um, that determines kind of the level and quality of everything that goes into the space. Sure. There are trade-offs. You can buy inexpensive tile maybe to splurge on a faucet or a steam unit for your shower. Ooh, so, um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you have those trade-offs for budget and then your time constraints, right? You obviously need to figure out how long this is going to take. Is this your primary and only bathroom? Yeah, how long can I hold it? it? <laughs> right. Um, you know, in a condo situation, you're going to have to be running down to the lobby every hour or two huh. hours. Um, so once you've kind of figured that gear out, you know, again, the importance of hiring the right professional mm-hmm. team at the beginning is key. Yeah. You, know, you need to hire an expert in kitchens and baths. You can look for designers whose portfolio displays numerous bathroom products. The NKBA, the National Kitchen and Bath Association, mm-hmm. has professionals who specifically specialize in uh, specialists who specialize, right? Um, <laughs> but they are specific really to designing kitchens and bathrooms, which are very similar. And the reason, to your point, that it can be very daunting and it's a complex problem yeah. to solve is that every trade is involved. Right. Your plumber is there. Your electrician is there. Your tile setter is there. Your carpenter is there. They all have to be project managed. Your electrician, of course, is there. And water and electricity don't mix. Water is the enemy of all buildings and the built yes. environment. <laughs> so you have to be very specific about the level of quality 
quality that you're hiring as well. And do that right off the bat, and right at the beginning. It's in a room that's, you know, five by eight for some people, right? It's so yeah, they can they can like be smaller spaces. Room to share. Right. And yeah. so that's why it's so important that it's sequential. You can really never have more than one or two people working. Even in large master bathrooms, we have to sequence that work right. specifically. So um, that's why the, the planning and strategic thinking at the beginning is so important. But then once you have all that in place, it becomes uh, more about the details, right? Then you really start to dig into where we are next, which is what are your finishes, your fixtures, your equipment. And that could be the really fun part, right? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. where I feel like it could be really easy to go over right. budget. Because <laughs> I didn't know this existed, and now I kind of want it. Right. You know? And I think what's really important, Haley, is that during the discovery phase, um, you know, I always say hire your designer first. That is, mm-hmm. That's director of your film, right? They're going to help you select all of the other professionals and and guide your aesthetic and advocate for you every step of the way. So in in the discover phase, I think it's really helpful to visit a site like Kohler.com or you can go to Brizo or Build.com. Uh, my friends over at Ferguson um, has a great website where you can literally see the pricing mm-hmm. for different levels of quality of fixtures and finishes. Yeah, it really helps smart. to establish a budget. A budget, excuse me. Based on reality. Yeah. And I always say that too, like budget should be based on reality. Do you do you only need a three hundred fifty dollar, you know, fiberglass tub? Mm-hmm. Or do you want a three thousand dollar jetted tub that's self heating and has air bubble circulation and chromotherapy? You know, yeah. you're very correct in products, but I say it's like any product. You go to a car lot. I mean, you can look mm-hmm. at something for ten thousand and something for a hundred thousand. Right. Sometimes in the same lot, right? It's very similar with clothing. There are different quality totally. levels, and the more um, advanced the features and the higher the finish and quality level, the more expensive it's going to be. Yeah. We're in the studio with Andy Yates from Andy Yates Design talking about bathroom renovations and things to consider. We talked about some of the main things that really would play out in any renovation that you should get done first. Andy, let's transition into some of the specifics now on your list, your 15-point list. Let's go <laughs> well, into that. We've flown through one through seven, um, and I, I'll combine a few more. But we were just discussing, and which is very important, right, I think you need to start with what is that feeling and that sense of experience you need in your bathroom, and then break it down into each component. Um, Probably one of the easiest is the relief function, right? So do you need a toilet in a separate room? I was going to say relief, relief but I thought, no, don't say that. (laughs) Yes. Be adult. We all relieve ourselves. Everybody poops, right? (laughs) Famously, we all know this phrase because everyone needs to use the restroom. So yes. sometimes it's very important for people to have separate toilet rooms. Sure. Sometimes space doesn't allow for that. And just as there are different levels and um, equipment related to bathtubs and showers and mm-hmm. units, um, toilets have really advanced in we the last We just talked about years. smart toilets yes, and we you just weeks talked ago. about this. You can, I was able you know, to um, visit the Toto showroom in Chicago recently with the Burke Agency. They're fantastic, our local Toto distributors. Um, you know, and when you see that $7,000 retail uh, washlet, the smart toilet they have, I mean, Just you know, crazy. it's heated, it self cleans, it has a nice. Does light. your dishes? I mean, I basically, mean, it does right? It Vacuums. Does everything but go for you, right? Essentially. <laughs> so you really can, um, you know, you really can splurge there if it right. is if it's part of your budget. Right. If that's important to you. If it's important to have a toilet with those features. Um, if it isn't and you just need a basic toilet, you know, a lot of people start there because it's a necessity yeah. and it's easy enough to kind of check that off your list and right. help sort of guide the aesthetics. Is it contemporary? Is it traditional? Um, what color is it? Right. It helps you develop your color palette. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, do you want an elongated bowl? Or are you in a more you know narrow space where you need a short bowl? Um, kind of just beginning there. You don't have to, but it's just one of those components of the restroom. Sure. Um Moving on, I think, you know, we talk about the, the sort of cleaning and prep area of a kitchen. I think of the how the sink and vanity work in a bathroom as mm-hmm. well. It's not a, the primary cleansing space. You are, though, kind of sometimes cleansing at the, the vanity. But you need to think about those issues, too, like the scale and size you're able to, right. you know, work into your bathroom and then 
what are the features you need there, right? right. Especially, how does it function for you? Yeah, how does it function? That think about the vanity, think about you know the mirror, um, you know your sink depth and size, the faucet features that you need. Um, I like a high gooseneck faucet in a lot of bathrooms because I just think it allows you to really get your hands under well, and wash your face. Well, there's nothing worse than having a faucet yeah. that's too close to the edge of the sink where you're constantly hitting your hands against the edge. You can't drink like out of that very uh, well. Uh, okay. Or <laughs> yeah, that's whatever true. you're talking about. <laughs> Same. Washing. <laughs> I still drink yes. out of my hand. Yeah. The vanity all the time. Well, with the gooseneck one, you can really get your head underneath that thing. Yeah, thank God yeah. for that. Yeah, right. I like yeah. that. <laughs> Andy's thinking. He, he gets me, and he's helping me plan. But because I'm in charge of the clock and everything else here, yeah. we're going to have to take a break. And there. on the other side, Andy, we're going to get through points, whatever we've got, 9 through 15, Oh something yeah, something like that. And we're just going to have a fun time all along the way. We'll be back in just a minute with Andy Yates from Andy Yates Design. Stay tuned. And we're back, and Haley and I are in the studio with Andy Yates from Andy Yates Design, talking about bathrooms. Andy, thanks for yeah. hanging with us over the break. Tolerating our humor. Yeah, yeah. I should have I should have had Andy go check out our bathroom here. Oh, jeez. But oh, my you goodness. Know. I've I been. Oh, have you been? Yeah. Oh. It's a warehouse bathroom. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> That's <laughs> all you need to say. It doesn't have a $7,000 smart toilet. I don't even know if it's got a dumb toilet. It's, it's, it's a toilet. It's a toilet. Andy, we were just talking about, you know, just all the things we need to think about. You were focused on the relief aspect of the bathroom, all the, the cleansing, the relief, you know, all, all the yeah. things. I don't know where to go with that. I'm getting <laughs> stumbled up with the idea of relief. relief. I can't stop saying that word. Right. Anyway, like Andy said, we all have to relieve ourselves at times. Let's just move on, Andy. What's the next <laughs> point? Sure. Well, we we were discussing uh, specifically vanities and the aspect of yes. you know selecting your right faucets and sinks. Um, there's also the element of storage that always comes into play with a vanity, right? And it's very important to understand the amount of storage you need mm -hmm. for um, you know the accoutrement and the equipment and what you use in the bathroom daily. You, you say that again. Uh, I say that word, but I don't say it right. <laughs> Accoutrements. The I French always, way. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead. As a, well, like, as a French speaker, I just sort of, that's the way I pronounce it. But it's. Uh, I liked it. It was pretty cool. All yeah. right. So we've got all our accoutrements and equipment. or whatever. Yes. And, and, and similarly, as you can, as there are different levels of quality for toilets and vanities and faucets, you know, when you think about the cabinetry in your bathroom, there are similarly as many upgrades as for your kitchen. You can have rollout shelves. Uh, a lot of clients love to have a stainless steel lined top sh drawer in their vanity. I'm a big fan because mm. it's so incredibly durable and cleanable. And that's where you can put kind of the messy stuff in there. Yeah. That's uh, inside something like that's the, closed Yeah, the away. drawer that you open, instead of it being a wood interior, it's a stainless interior, like very much like old school metal cabinetry. It's wow. super easy to clean that Right. Way. And um, even if you use highly acidic products, they may damage the steel lining, like some makeup, some hair products, sure. some medicines even that people might use. Um, um, that are more liquid or gel form that are very acidic and caustic. Mm -hmm. They may damage the stainless interior, but that's always replaceable. The wood of the cabinet, yeah. the drawer, right, has integrity. And very often, too, we'll use that kind of liner instead of a plastic under a sink in the kitchen mm. for that as well as in a bathroom. And because you can have really caustic, mm -hmm. you don't need very caustic chemicals to clean your bathroom no, actually we we'll have get that. into that but <laughs> some people prefer bleach or maybe they have comet or you know, something that's a little bit yeah <laughs> um for the deep clean a little bit heavier right yeah so you think of all those elements in your cabinet and then of course the aesthetic what is you know the the look the feel the hardware so traditional contemporary i would opt for um either laminate durable finishes that are polymers or wood sure you know, and also bathrooms really can sometimes lean clinical. So I think it's nice to introduce the element of wood at a vanity. Just like natural. Yeah, natural oak yeah. or a nice burl maple. Or if you know you want something stained deep and rich and dark. I like the balance of what tends to be a very light and white and airy space. We prefer that in bathrooms. It's um, clean. Clean. Yeah. It's easy to see when it isn't clean, allegedly. Um, so that's why I went I say with allegedly. darker colors because yeah. I can't tell. Yeah, same. It just feels clean mm -hmm. all the time. Right, yeah. And some people love <laughs> a drop moody, something, it's dark done. bathroom. Yeah. I, you know, again, figuring that aesthetic out at the beginning will help drive it. But yeah. 
the general issue is materiality Mm -hmm. for your vanity, for your sinks, for your stone tops and tile. You need to think about how it's used, but also the durability and how to care for it, the cleanability and maintenance. Right. Um, A lot of people love the look of marble. Marble is an absorbent stone. It's very high maintenance and it's very difficult to maintain it. It's not difficult. It's just takes extra. yeah, Yeah. It's not effortless. What's your choice for the like bathroom countertops then? Um, you know, if you love the look of natural stone and you want to use a quartz, a quartzite, a granite, um, again, limestones and marbles, because they're more porous and they're more absorbent, you know, you have to be very careful about what you set on top of them. And I don't know about you specifically. I have clients who are very fastidious regarding that, and I have clients who are not. So we always discuss I mean, be true to yourself, yes, right? Exactly. The way you don't literally, set yourself up. You're not. You're changing. a pig. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have that. Right. You're right? not going to change your behavior magically because no. you bought a very expensive marble countertop, and you know now you're never going to leave caustic materials out on that countertop. Even right. a glass of wine, right. you know, uh, can leave a, a permanent ring because it's so dark. I think that's a really good point for any renovation, any project, and so many things. Mm-hmm. You know, we we buy something new and assume that we'll make a change now. Yes. You know, this will yeah. bring me to that next level of whatever, and I, I'll be able to handle this material. Or, But it's not really how it plays out. We don't really no. change permanently just for that reason. Unfortunately. No. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be the big enough motivator. <laughs> and it's really important to understand that because I bought certain things that – I assumed I was going to just adapt to the new needs, yes. and I don't, and then I end up it's having to replace those things right. over right. and over. So that's a great point. I like that. It's I feel thumbs like, up, Andy. It's analogous to when you know uh, the the urban dweller moves out to the country, and then they they really do need the truck. They really need the the, the three fifty four fifty level truck with the super king cab and the bed. And you, what do they end up putting in there? It's like groceries, right? Like. <laughs> Your eyes were a little, I feel like I need this because I'm going to become a farm person. I'm going to become a truck person. And then it's like, Mm, eh, you're still kind of just driving it (laughs) to the grocery store. And (laughs) that's who you are. Never finding a parking spot big enough, like downtown, right? Or um, So, you know, never let your eyes get bigger than your stomach. And also be realistic about how you live and how you want the bathroom to function. That's why quartz and porcelain are so beautiful. They're so versatile, natural mm-hmm. ceramics. Um, they're inexpensive, generally speaking, at the entry-level price point. Um, they have huge formats, so you can have very monolithic-looking bathrooms, floors that have very little to no grout joints, showers that are seamless. Um, you move up in price to other you know, porcelain slabs. You have materials like Decton and even quartz slabs for showers and quartz bases. Wow. We're seeing that more often. And then the shower, I mean, you can go bananas if you want. There are so many aspects of um, showering and bathing that can introduce luxury into the space. So you can do body jets and rain heads and dual shower heads, steam as an option. In bathing, we talked about chromotherapy, hydrotherapy. That sounds so great. Yeah. The steam? Yeah. It does. Seems great. Yeah. It's You're going to want to be using Aura Bath and Spa in that bathroom. It's true. Yes. Yeah. Like always, of course. When yeah. you, if you paint your bathroom surfaces, always use a paint that's very specifically uh, chemically yes. engineered yes. for, for wet and damp spaces. And Benjamin Moore's Bath and Spa paint is one of the most phenomenal. It yeah. literally does not streak on right. the walls. No. I've, it really it's like magic. It I don't understand it. It is it's chemistry. it's the magic of chemistry, yes, right? Exactly. Well, um, I'd explain it to you both, but clearly <laughs> you wouldn't get it. So I just you know, I just had Beth present for my college class. Beth and, McGuire from yeah, Benjamin from, Moore. And she did a phenomenal job describing, you know, how much innovation that Benjamin Moore specifically places into the the chemistry and the composition of their paints. So it's, it's very interesting when you dig into Benjamin it. Moore. Yeah, yeah, thank you. For today's podcast. <laughs> and Repco about, Light paints are yeah, good, too. <laughs> I want to know about chromotherapy. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's very basic and intrinsic to human beings and to all life on Earth that light um, is nurturing and rejuvenating to us. And we know that the sun is the reason that we have life on this planet. Um, very similarly, different wavelengths of light have different properties. And they 
um, our, our human bodies react differently to those. So when you talk about wavelengths that are very low on the spectrum, um, your warm colors, right, your reds, oranges mm -hmm. into yellows, those are the colors of like sun and sunset and they're very, you know, they're very soothing. They can be very healing. You thought mm -hmm. you have, we've all known about infrared saunas, mm -hmm. right? That that red light, it's very deep, um, large. I always do this, right? Large yeah, wavelengths large of waves. light um, versus going into light that is cooler on the spectrum, right? So cooler light is more energizing and, and rejuvenating. Um, if you think about having brighter Kelvin on the Kelvin scale, having sure, brighter right. lights, um, so to speak, in your bathroom as I do, you know, and lighting in bathrooms is so important, but so I have So is that layered. what we're talking yeah. about, the lighting in the bathroom, it's or did a, that have can, something to do can, with the shower? It like changes It changes color. color. The shower? The bathtubs integrate it, some bathtubs. Um, there are lights, there are actual physical bulbs, lights, and yeah. units you can place in your ceiling. Okay. So That in, I could get. The way that I interpret this, I do like, you know, the poor man's version, but in the That's morning funny. I have my all my lights on because I need it bright, but I've specifically placed like 4,000K bulbs in my sconces. 4,000K LED, super bright, a very clean, closer to daylight mm -hmm. light. That's what I need in the morning to wake up. And everyone should think about layering light. That's actually point number... 11, we were just... Oh, my goodness. But okay. layering in light because you really want to light yourself at your face, at your vanity, not a light bar. Please don't put lights over your mirror. They need to flank your mirror. They need to be integrated into the mirror. Okay. Lights over That's the why mirror. why I look like this. It's because I have a light bar. Well, I'm right. not seeing what I need <laughs> to see. Well, they light down. It's not flattering. No, they cause not. shadows, and they're not as functional. You know, So I always say, I, I, my clients recently purchased or uh, built a home... And I came in after to kind of help, and they had all of the light bars above their mirrors facing down with clear bulbs in them. And I, no, we yeah. flipped the, I had the electrician flipped them all and then put in frosted bulbs, right? Frosted bulbs and clear fixtures, clear bulbs and frosted fixtures. This is just a 100% rule for all interiors. Huh. You never want to see a filament. You never want that in your bathroom. You want to light yourself at your face. You want, well, those really low vintage ones if you're into that, but they don't have the intensity <laughs> yes. of like causing a lot of glare. Yeah. But you want to make sure you have proper lighting for generally this, you know, the areas, lighting for your specific functions, the toilet, the at the vanity, in the shower and bathtub, right? You're thinking about lighting as not only practical, but from a safety aspect and from a cleaning aspect. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then speaking of safety, right, these are wet locations, so you want to understand coefficients of friction on your materials and slip resistance. So it's very important to know that um, if you're someone who might have balance issues or are prone to falling, you know, then we get into sort of bathrooms that can be adapted for use over time. Hmm. Plan for grab bars even if you don't have them now. Um, plan for as much zero clearance, shower and bathing entrance and exit as you can, a, a kitchen and bath professional and any certified designer, you know, NCIDQ certified designer as I am, will have to know, have had known these codes um, for certification. But also this is like very basic to how you will operate and function in your bathroom. Over your life. Yeah. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. want to plan yeah, for ad adaptability like and flexibility and think long term. If this is the bathroom renovation, you're going to put Right. You know, a significant investment into it and you want to use this over the long term, you don't want to have to come in and renovate Redo it. Redo it. <laughs> and a lot of aftermarket products are okay, like suction cup grab bars or some other safety aids or, or aids. Never stick those on your forehead, though. No. Because, like, that will leave Terrible. a big ring. Oh it they're, will. They're it, really not a lie. strong suction. <laughs> um, and to that end, you know, you're thinking this is a wet space. This is a damp space. You need to have proper and primo ventilation you know, find the most powerful fan that you can exhaust for that. It That's is the really quietest important. Yeah. fan. Yeah. Um, and make sure you're you're leaving that on after yeah, you make shower sure and you're bathe. Using pulling it. out all of that moisture from the air. You you know, that's gonna cause so many problems, right? Um and you know, if you have a window for ventilation and natural light, again, planning for that. If it's a new build or if it's an addition, that's wonderful. We all love natural light. Think about how you would control that. Yeah, because privacy. if the privacy aspect of it, we use clear story windows often in showers and uh, windows outside of showers. You know, you use a covering um, or you know, opaque the opacity of the glass sure. to make sure that yeah. you feel very private, but you're 
getting the benefits of all that light. Yeah. If our listeners want to get in touch and maybe ask you some questions, check out your website, how's the best way for them to, for them to do that? They all my words there. So. Sure. No. Well, and it's live, too. It There's is. There's no so editing that No out. fixing we are, that. We are actually humans who sometimes misspeak. And we go to the bathroom, and we as all... we established <laughs> So how do we get in touch? AndyYatesDesign.com is my website. I'm also on the socials, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at AndyYatesDesign. And anyone can reach out to me through any of those mediums, and I'll be happy to respond. Excellent. Andy Yates. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you. Dan Haley, thank you both very much. This was fun. Now, all right, after a quick break, we're going to be back talking about our big contest. That's just ahead. Stick around. 